giving you a voice and making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archive first robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another season of Best of the West. Once again, every Monday this season, we'll be breaking down all of the FRC action in the better half of the United States, from Colorado to California, Alberta to Arizona, all the way out to the beautiful islands of Hawaii. If you're interested in what's going on, we've got you covered. Every Monday, we'll cover the weekend's events, look forward to next week's matchups, and talk about what's going on in the FRC community. Reporting for First Updates Now, I'm Clint Ott. I'm Bryce Croucher. And I'm Aiden Ferrer. All right, guys, so teams have been working on their deep space robots for 50 days now. Uh, we're just a couple of days away from getting to see official robots on official fields. We've seen the week zero stuff. We've seen a flood of reveal videos over the last week. So what do we have forward to look what do we have to look forward to here in the West this week? Up here in the Pacific Northwest, all eyes will be on the Mount Vernon District event as 34 teams, including a plethora of historical contenders, show off what deep space is all about for the first time. Some eager viewers will watch to see fantastic machines that have already been unveiled, such as 2910 Jack and the Bot, 5803 Apex, and 1318 IRS in action. Others will tune in to see local household names such as 360 The Revolution, 1983 Skunk Works, 2930 Sonic Squirrels, and 3663 CPR, who have yet to reveal the product of their six weeks effort. In addition, all of last year's winners, 2147, 21, 2910, and 4682, will all be in attendance once again. So the competition is sure to be fierce for those first few destination deep space district points. Man, PNW starts out fast. They did that last year. It looks like they're going to do that again. Um, just south of that, down in sunny Southern California, we've got a new event to kick off the season, the Del Mar Regional presented by Qualcomm, was a late add to the FRC docket. Adding 35 more plays was a welcome relief to many West Coasters, and several out-of-towners are taking advantage of the additional spots to open up their season. Del Mar will play host to a handful of household California names like Team 8, Paley Robotics, 399 Eagle Robotics, 2102 Paradox, and 3647 The Millennium Falcons. Competing alongside them are some folks traveling a long way to get there, like Hall of Fame 359, the Hawaiian Kids, 2576, Chilean Heart, and 5526, the T-Cats. And while 7426, pair of Dice Robotics, uh, probably my new favorite FRC team name, uh, is the only rookie team competing. Newly formed 4414 High Tide will be joining 3647 in the Side Elevator Club in their first event as a team. With the field headed to Del Mar this weekend, their inaugural event is sure to be a good one. Yeah, I got to say, 44-14, that's high tide. You look at their branding, you look at the robot that they've made this year, and you would not be able to tell that this is one of their first seasons out on that field. They look super nice, super clean, super professional. Well, also down SoCal, we've got the Orange County Regional. Uh, OCR might be the strongest event we'll see this week, with 50 teams hailing from across California, China, the Netherlands, and even Colorado. All three defending champs of OCR 2018 will be returning. That's 812 Midnight Mechanics, 3473 Team Sprocket, and 5805 Assembly required. But they'll be up against quite a few former world champions as well. In the mix are teams 294 Beach Cities Robotics, 973 The Gray Bots, 5012 Griffin Gear, and of course, competing for their final season, 330 The Beach Bots. Crazy amounts of firepower from these former champs, as well as teams like 597 The Wolverines, 1836 The Milk and Knights, 3250 Kennedy Robotics, 3309 Friar Bots, 4201 Vitruvian Bots, 4481 Rembrandts out of the Netherlands, and 5802 Los Stemateros. 
This event is going to be great for the powerful teams looking to hit the ground running as they'll not only be in such a competitive environment from week one, but they'll have plenty of time to make adjustments over the season for their second and third events. Of course, the Chairman's Award is going to be equally as competitive. If you've been on the Chief Delphi forums recently and taken a gander at the Chairman's Power Rating thread, you'll see that quite a few of these teams are looking strong just based off their past seasons. 3309, 4481, and 4201 all scoring those blue banners last year and looking to load up on even more wallpaper this weekend. Of course, we can't look overlook the New Blood making their debut this Friday. We're going to see teams 7447 Ronin Robotics, 7482 Lincoln Panther Robotics, 7524 Regen from China, and 7572 Uplift Robotics working hard to make a name for themselves in the pursuit of their Rookie All-Star Awards. All right, so we're starting things off a little slow here in the West with only three events this weekend. Um, but we've got a lot of deep space to play this season. Aiden, Bryce, what are you guys uh, looking forward to the most? Um, teams, events, stuff like that. Man, I think I speak for a lot of people when I say I am super hyped to see what 254 throws out. I don't think we've gotten many looks, if any, at what they're going to have. I've heard great things about it. We're looking at a team that's trying to defend not just one, but two championship titles in the past two years. So who knows? They might go for a third in a row. Uh, it'd be really fun to see. I'm also really excited to see what 1323 does. That's Madtown Robotics out of Madeira. Um, I strongly believe that this might be their year, given the past two years of them doing Swerve. They've got a history of working with elevators. They've got a lot of really great robots under their belt and this game plays to a lot of the strengths that i've seen so like you know you have all these teams that have been playing with swerve and mechanum trying to get that sideways motion but how do you fare against the og team uh how do you fare against someone who's been doing this for a while and has become masterful at it uh so who knows what 1323 is going to do 254 quite honestly could probably throw out lockdown from last year and still do better than like both of my teams and most <laughs> teams out there. So who knows what they'll throw out um, event wise. You know, if there's one thing we've proven on this show in the past, it's personal biases. And by God, I am excited for San Francisco regional. Um, I love SF. It runs on time. It's a great fun little event. Uh, we have 40 something teams showing up. Not quite sure about the exact number, um, but it's a little smaller than most events, but it's super great. Super fun. Uh, and Monterey Bay is going to be interesting, too, because it's a new one showing up uh, just about 30 minutes from where I live. So it'll be nice. Yeah. Uh, speaking of personal bias, uh, being a Pacific Northwest resident, I can't help but be super psyched to see the next uh, PNW champs. This year, it's going to be in a new location uh, taking place in Tacoma, uh, as opposed to the last several years. It's been between Portland and Spokane. Uh the big thing that I'm really actually excited to see is how the low focus robots compare against high focus robots uh, when it comes to actual gameplay. Um, I, this is going to happen at a lot of events. Uh, there's got to be a lot of lower focus robots that we'll see succeed that haven't had unveil videos yet. But uh, two robots that have been unveiled are 2910 and 1339, and I'm super excited for both of those guys. Um, Arizona North, I think, could be a really big event for the showdown between uh, tall and short bots uh, with powerhouse teams on both sides, like 118 and 842, and potentially 1011 and 1339. Um, so I think those are some of the biggest things I look forward to seeing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, um, you know, you're talking about low focus robots there. I, I definitely think that. You know, we've seen a lot of teams that have built robots that can reach up to the, you know, level two and three rocket goals. Um, what do you, you know, as far as the value in doing that over the value of staying low and kind of focusing your efforts on the ground level, um, how do you think that'll pay out for some of these teams like 1339 and 2910? Yeah, I think that teams that went low uh, we'll be exceptionally glad, especially in the early weeks, uh, because with the simpler robot design, it's quite likely they'll be able to get more driver practice in. And I think that the Rocket RP is going to be fairly rare, especially early weeks, uh, certainly when compared with the uh, Hab Climb RP. So I think you'll see these teams rank in the top eight easily, 
uh, potentially even taking the number one seed and captaining their alliance. Uh, it could transition if teams get really good at Rocket play later in the season to them being a first-round draft, but I don't think their value is ever going to diminish to a point where they're not a very early pick when driven well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, if you look at teams last year, you know, got a little bit um, maybe jaded by the Switch game, you know, some of the best scale robots in the world were also the best switch bots in the world, right? Because the the gameplay was so similar. Um, but this year, I think they're number one. There being more value on the low goals. There's, um, you know, over half of the goals on the field are low goals, right? So you have tons of scoring opportunities open to you. Um, you know, the a majority of the gameplay is very similar, but you get to cut out all of the mechanisms involved with raising two different game piece manipulators up you know to that second and third level uh, you can build your robot lighter faster if you want to um, there's definitely a lot of benefits going low and i and i don't see especially early on um, teams really putting a lot of weight in their first pick on um, the ability to go higher it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me uh, so I do think those teams will be rewarded and um, good for them for you know picking a, a solid strat right out of the gate, and hopefully it pays off. Uh, as far as teams I'm looking forward to that I haven't seen yet with reveal videos and whatnot, uh, 971 always has cool robots. Um, I've heard that they're trying to you know, be even more competitive this year than they ever have before. So that's a, a scary proposition um, if you've ever seen one of their robots, especially their 2016 robot. I think it's gnarly. Oh, my uh, God. <laughs> so awesome. Uh, twenty-one, twenty-two. Good friends of Taters from Idaho. Um, love their love their team. Super nice guys, and they always build great robots. They're a team that starts out, um, and they intentionally focus on a subset of capabilities. So, back in twenty sixteen, they focused on just doing low goal and defenses, and then by championships, they were a high goal shooter with a climber and they had all the functionality after three events or whatever. So I'm super excited to see how their season starts and how it progresses from there. And then uh, 987, the high rollers, I, I love their team. Uh, they always come out with cool robots. I think we played with them in 2017. Super nice group of guys and girls, uh, obviously. And um, just just super excited to see what they feel this year. Events wise, I'm looking forward to Colorado as always. You know, love your hometown event. We've got 624 is the only team coming up from Texas that I know of, as opposed to last year where we had like the, the whole Texas invasion going on. Um, 3374 from Wyoming was on the Galileo Winning Alliance. 1339, like Bryce talked about, love that team. They do great stuff. 4499 when Carver. And 49-44 played against them in the Carver Finals. Both Colorado teams both going to be there. So I think uh, I definitely think Colorado Week 4 is shaping up to be a really good event. Um, Las Vegas, uh, that's my personal bias. I'm going to game announce there, so that's going to be super fun. Ooh. Uh, me and me and Tyler going to going to go down there. And yeah, man. A heck that's of a, a show. dynamic duo. If I've so ever heard of one, it, it or a, a shit fun show time. one or two, but yeah. <laughs> So, um, you know, and it's got a whole host of great teams. 696 Circuit Breakers coming over from California. 842 Falcon coming up from Arizona. 987 will be there. The Milk and Knights and Friar Bots are both coming over from California as well. So I, I definitely think that it's going to be a good event, and I'm, I'm super looking forward. It'll be my first time going to an event in Vegas. Um, so it should be a good trip. Um, Aiden, what, uh, what else are you looking forward to as far as gameplay goes? Uh, this week, this week in particular, the season, Man, the long season. We don't want to, we don't want to put too much conjecture in. Um, I just want to figure out how to. this game is played. Like how, how do we do deep space? Right. I think people have a really good idea um, of what the game looks like. We've been building about uh, six weeks, seven weeks. If you got a practice robot, um, but you know, a lot of things that tend to happen are we make all these assumptions about the game. Uh, we're quick to judge, and then everything blows up in our face, and things don't turn out the way we see them. So I think you know you can see things like how is Rocket RP going to compare to Climbing RP, right? What are we going to see with those kinds of matchups? Because I think a lot of people thought that Climbing was going to be more difficult than filling a rocket solo or with a low buddy, and uh, 
that might not be true. I think we're seeing a lot of level three climbs, a lot of solo level three climbs, a couple buddy climbs here and there. Not that many people going for a level two. So it's more likely than not a lot of teams are going to inflate their scores ranking wise uh, through those climbs. So it'd be interesting to see how that prediction comes true or not. I've heard of teams practicing on the Rockets, and right now their solo times are looking like four minutes. Um, and that's a minute and a half over what a standard match looks like. So I don't know if people are going to be able to fill those Rockets in time um, unless they put in some serious work over the next couple of weeks for drive practice. I just want to see what the game looks like, quite frankly. Uh, I'm really excited. I want to know what to watch for. I want to figure out what strategies we need to be thinking of as a team. And I recommend that everyone else do the same. Um, if you're not paying attention this week, man, you're going to be so behind when you go to your competition. For sure. Yeah, I think this week there's going to be a lot of learning. And like you said, I think that the climbing is going to be really important. One thing that I really look forward to seeing, uh, hopefully somewhere this week, is some team that no one expects who didn't post an unveil video comes to competition with a really solid level three climb and uh ranks one and takes the tournament you know i think that basically you got to have that and you got to have good drivers which means simple robots are going to have a big shot for taking the top seeds this week yeah yeah i i agree with both of you for sure um so real quick here before we wrap up the show i want a bold prediction from everyone on here for like a season-long bold prediction Season-long bold prediction. Yeah. Oh, and then we'll boy. come back later. We'll watch the video and then we'll oh, compare no. in the last oh, week no. of the season. Uh, I'll go first. How about that? Yeah. Yeah. All go right. for it. Before week five, we'll see someone have a four O R P score ranking score. Wow. Before week five. Yeah. Like a, That's a bold four point oh average. Out of where though? Like, what event do you think? I, I, don't, I don't know. I'm just <laughs> saying that somewhere, someone will do it. Uh, I see someone, I'm gonna in the say... chat, uh, someone in the chat saying 5012 loses their bumpers again. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> a well emoji. Yikes. Um, yikes. I think they've learned from that probably, so I'm going to have to go against that. I think uh, my bold prediction, I'm going to say season-long high score is... Under 120. Season-long high score under 120. I don't think anyone gets What's within the... 30 points to the limit. The limit's like 155 or something. Okay, I didn't know if you're just throwing out a number that was way above the limit or something like that. Yeah. Um, I said 100, but I think someone's going to break 100, but it'll happen on a handful of times, I think. Okay, my bold prediction... Um, and this might get some hate, but I sincerely think 254's 53-0 and season is just not going to happen. Um, I think so much of this game relies on coordination uh, to a similar extent of power-up, um, but the field's a little bit differently congested. I think just there's going to be so much dependency on teammates. I don't know if 254 can go undefeated all their way to a world championship. So I'd like to see if they can try and do that again. I don't know if it's reasonable to ask, especially out of this season. This season looks like it's going to be brutal on everyone. Yeah, uh, I saw in the chat someone said hot take 16-19 goes undefeated this season. Uh, <laughs> hot take 16-19 will probably lose their first five matches of the season. Um, <laughs> so uh, I'm not sure about that. But I also don't think your prediction is all that bold. I mean, a completely undefeated season has happened exactly one time in FRC history at this point, I think. Yeah, so. that's fair. <laughs> I don't want to say anything I'll regret either. That's good. Uh, that's good. Yeah. Scary. All right. All right. So we'll come back to this at the end of, I guess, week six, and we'll uh, you know revisit our predictions. But that's all we have time for tonight, guys. So um, thanks for tuning in. Uh, you know, thanks for hanging out with us in the chat. If you want more first row box in your life and like what we do, all we ask you to let others know about this show. If you've got a few bucks to support the stream, we appreciate it. If not, we totally understand. We're stoked to have you here. On behalf of myself, Bryce, Aiden, and our producer, Tyler, I'd like to thank you for tuning in and thank all of our moderators in the chat. We'll talk to you next week on Best of the West. Bye-bye. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers, keeping fun loud, live, and independent.
Pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now.